Hi guys, welcome to Prague ICU. I'm Mikhail Pazdernik and today I would like to share with you more useful information about central venous catheter insertion. Before we proceed with CVC insertion, we need to decide which side are we going to go with. There is an internal jugal vein, subclavian vein and femoral vein. Probably the most frequently used site of placement is right internal jugal vein. Right IJ has high access rate. It is safe as there is low risk of pneumothorax. On the other side, cannulation might be difficult in hypovolemia and difficult during CPR. Subclavian access might be more comfortable for patient and there is less infection risk. In contrast, there is a high risk of pneumothorax and high failure rate. Femoral access ensure high success rate, no risk of pneumothorax, but there is high infection risk. It limits patient's mobility and doesn't provide us accurate CVP measurements. What are the indications for CVC line placement? Administration of medications that require central access, such as vasopressors and hyperosmolar solutions. Monitoring of central venous pressure. We might need CVC for fluid resuscitation if there is difficult peripheral access, for hemodialysis, for PA catheterization, for transvenous pacing or for mixed venous blood saturation measurements. Obviously, there are several absolute or relative contraindications, such as infection, overlying the insertion site, thrombosis of the targeted vein, severe coagulopathy or raised intracranial pressure. Complications include pneumothorax, hemothorax, hematoma, accidental arterial puncture, thoracic duct injury, air embolus in ECMO patients, infection, thrombosis. Most commonly, three, four and five lumen lines are inserted. In patients with cardiogenic shock, with an indication of right heart catheterization, we can also choose the nine French arrow line with a sheet. First of all, confirm what the line will be used for and how many infusions a patient is going to have, as this will help you to select the line with the correct amount of lumens. We should be familiar with regional anatomy of neck for landmark approach, as it might be useful in emergency situations and in the absence of ultrasound. For internal jugal vein cannulation, we most commonly choose the right side. Why? Because there is usually a larger diameter of the right-sided vein, there is more direct path to the superior vena cava, we observe lower dome of pleura, there is no thoracic duct in the way, and it is usually easier for right-handed operators. Before the procedure, we should explain the procedure to the patient and get the consent. We start by placing the bed in the 10 to 15 degrees Trendelenburg position. We check the field with ultrasound, set up the sterile trolley and have assistant by side. Nowadays, we should perform all vessel cannulations on ICU under real-time ultrasound. It is undesirable to put our patients at risk if not using ultrasound, as this approach was proved to be associated with significantly less frequent complications. We use 2D ultrasound, color and pulse Doppler. We can decide whether we use the classical high-frequency linear probe or the hockey probe. Here we can see that there is a clear evidence that ultrasound-guided jugular CVC placement is superior to landmark approach and therefore should be preferred. Longitudinal view provides in-plane view. It is parallel to beam axis. This approach is definitely technically more challenging, but on the other side it provides full visualization of the needle tip, which reduces the risk of posterior wall penetration. Transverse view, so-called out-of-plane view, short axis view. In this case, usually only tip of the needle can be seen. We use tilting and shifting of the probe to get the correct image of the needle tip. There is shorter learning curve 
we can better visualize the sounding structures and we can comfortably accommodate the probe in obese patients. On ultrasound in 2D, the vein is larger and oval. Vein can be nicely visualized as a compressible structure compared to artery, which is non-compressible. Color Doppler shows overview of direction of flow in both vessels. This image shows pulse Doppler with a cursor in carotid artery showing a pulsatile flow. Next image shows longitudinal axis view with vein being more superficial compared to the artery. We can also tilt the probe more downwards and follow the internal jugular vein into a brachiocephalic vein. Important question is usually how deep to insert the line. We can cite the Sepsisac article published years ago. The correct position in superior vena cava can be counted as follows. Height of a patient divided by 10, then subtract 1 and we get the number in centimeters. On x-ray, the catheter tip should be above the carina, thus ensuring placement above the pericardial sac. The correct site should be in extra pericardial vena cava due to the potential risk of a vascular disruption or heart perforation. On the other side, the line shouldn't be placed not so high in CVC as it increases the risk of thrombosis. Post-procedure, we should always do the lung ultrasound X-ray, all sharps should be disposed into sharp containers and the documentation should be appropriately finalized. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos and presentation from Prague ICU.